hello friends welcome you in this video tutorial uh, in this video tutorial we are going to talk about the some of the important features of a string class in java so in previous video tutorial we have seen some basic concept about a string classes a string class in java in this video tutorial we'll see few features so what you can see on the slide so first of all we'll explore a string in java is immutable right so once you create a string object the content of that string cannot be modified as uh, we have already seen uh, java maintains a, a string pool uh, in previous video tutorial where references are shared the changing content of any of the string will also affect the other strings sharing the same references that's one reason that, that that's the reason uh, why a string is immutable in java right here being immutable means uh, uh, whenever you perform any operation on a string which alters its content uh, a new string object is created which contains the modified string original string uh, left as it is if there are no references to the original string uh, it is garbage collected right as as example if you go to the uh, string classes then you may get a lot of methods which basically modify the uh, uh, modify the string uh, string uh, original string like you have a two lower case two upper case right so when you call these methods on uh, a string object right that is the original string gets modified in that all those key all those methods which basically modified the original string in that case you get the uh, totally new object right totally new objects getting created right even though uh, when you uh, perform a concatenation using uh, you have a method is called concat right you have a method is called concat so even though if you call concat means original string is gonna modify it in that case this method returns you the new object even though if you perform the concatenation using plus operator will result in the creating a new a string object right so in the in the case a string is modified frequently consider using a string buffer or a string builder classes which are mutable class and that we will see in the next series of video tutorial so i hope you understood why ja a string in java is immutable now second feature java class uh, java class right uh, a, a, sorry a string class in java is final so if you go to the string class and you look at over here this class is declared as final right so whenever you perform any operation or a string which alters its content a new object uh, new string object is create uh, created right containing the modify a string which means all the methods of the string class in java that modify the content in any way returns a new string object with the modified content right now what if you can override the method of the string class and provide a new uh, provide a new implementation to modify the content of the string and return the original string itself what happened to the string pool then where are strings having the same data share the same references right so let's try to understand these things through an example like uh, you have a scenario like uh, you extend the suppose you extend the string class and override uh, has code and equals method in such a way that two dissimilar strings return the same has code and at the same time equals returns true then uh, then you can have different strings sharing the same references in the string pool to avoid this kind of scenarios a string is declared as final in java and it can't be uh, overridden right its method cannot be overridden right and that's the reason uh, java has declared a string class as final right now next point we have a string uh, thread safety right so since a string objects are immutable thus that is thread safe that's very simple now next point we have a overloaded operator in a string right so apart from using a concat method to con concat two strings plus operator can be used to do the same actually uh, let's try to understand this thing through an example so here you can see i have a here uh, you have we have a two string is str1 and str2 so and both string we have created using string literal and now here to concat these two strings either you can use concat method of a string which already i have shown you 
or you can even use the plus operator right so when you apply str1 plus str2 so here uh, this this is called operand this two is operand this is operator so any of the operand is a string then result would be concatenation right so here both a string we, uh, both operand uh, operands are a string so here concatenation will be performed so str value will get hi hello this two uh, string value will be concatenated and same will be printed right so after concatenating we are storing into the str1 itself so this will give you the value as hi hello now uh, as we know that we have a compound operator in java so these two operator plus equals and plus sign you can write all together something like this so th this is the basically this is the shortcut form of this in uh, this is the expanded form so when you write str plus equal to str2 means str equal to str1 plus str2 basically so here at this point of time your value would be hi hello again you are doing str equal to str1 plus str2 means uh, at this point of time uh, str value would be hi hello again you are concatenating uh, uh, str2 so this value uh, here modified value in str1 what you are printing over here value would be hi hello hello something like this because str2 is still hello so if i run this example then you'll see first value would be uh, so here okay okay some value is hidden so str1 at this point of time would be hi hello and again when you are doing str equal to str str1 plus str2 then hi hello and hello output we are getting so that's all about the overloaded operator in a string now how we can compare a string objects right so let's try to understand so to compare a string objects uh, if you consider case insensitivity means if you consider capital letter and a small letter as different then definitely we should use the equals method and that's what we have another example right so here uh, we'll see how we can uh, compare uh, two uh, string objects right so uh, in previously we, what we have seen in, in a string pool uh, we used a double equal to compare references but what if we want to compare content of two strings even if their references are different they have to use equals method uh, right in that case so here you can see str1 and str2 right if you want to check the content of these two strings then i would do str1 dot equals str4 right and uh, of course content of these two string is same so uh, whatever st uh, statement we have written in the if block this is going to be true and this is this will print str1 and str4 are same now now next what we are checking we are checking the reference here we are comparing the reference uh, so str1 that contains the abc and str4 this is also contain abc but this is pointing to the string constant pool and this is pointing to the heap object which is created in the heap so these two are pointing to two different memory location this so this is going to be false and you'll get str1 and str4 are not same right if i run this application then here you can see the expected output now if you want if you do not care about uh, case insensitivity like uh, let's say this right and if you don't want to care about the uh, if you do not care about the case insensitivity then you can use equal ignore case there is one more method is called str1 dot equal ignore case and str4 then this that is going to return you true but here equals method consider a uh, every character compares with the case sensitivity so this will understand capital a and a small l will treat as a different so now after making uh, first letter as capital a in str1 this method is going to return you false so if i run this application then you'll see this is going to return you a uh, false right and that's what uh, you are getting a statement uh, from the else block right so if you don't want to uh, care about the case and sensitivity then equal ignore case you will have to use right now let's come back to over here so all the features we have uh, uh, we have looked now 
uh, all the points I have consolidated in this slide related to the so all the important points related to the string class in Java. So let's go through the all the points. First point says internally the string class strings are stored as a character array and that we have uh, seen in the previous video tutorial. If you go to the string class on the top then uh, uh, string class. So string basically is stored internally as a character array and here you can see. Now strings in Java Java are objects and all strings are instances of string class pretty straightforward right. Strings can be created by assigning a string literal directly to a string reference like a string str equal to abc which may look like assigning to a primitive data type but don't forget strings are objects right. Now next point string literals are treated differently they are stored, stored in a string pool and that is a common pool right that already we have seen in the previous video tutorial. Now if there are two strings literal have the same content then those string will share the same 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 space in the string constant pool right. Now string is immutable in Java once you create a string object the content of a string cannot be modified right. So original uh, a string will cannot be modified. So if you try to modify the string then all together you will get the new object and that is what immutable immutability says. Now since a string is immutable whenever you perform any operation on a string which alters its content a uh, new string object is created which contains the modified string and original string is left as it is right. Now a string class is immutable also it is also thread safe because of immutability that is thread safe. So a string without fear a string object you can share among the threads right. Now a string class is declared as final it can't be overridden that already we have seen. Now plus operator is overloaded for a string and it is used for the concatenating strings right. Now next point says using intern method you can still get a string object from the pool if it is exist even if even if new operator is used to create a string and that already we have seen in the previous video tutorial through an example. So if you did not watch my previous video tutorial related to a string class in Java then please go and watch and these things we have uh, uh, seen through an example. Now for comparing the content of two string equals method is used if we want to ignore case then uh, you can use equals ignore case method right. Now from Java 7 a string can also be used in switch case statement and that is very uh, popular and these things I have uh, I have co covered in the Java 7 features on the KK Java video tutorials KK, KK Java tutorials. So you can go and try to search by this topic then you will see uh, a separate video on KK Java tutorials. Now join method is added in the string class in Java 8 which makes a it uh, very easy to join multiple strings and this is also I have covered in the Java 8 features on KK Java video uh, KK Java tutorials. So if you want to see uh, videos on the last point then you can go and try to search uh, uh, string join method uh, in Java 8 on KK Java by KK Java tutorials you will get a separate video on it. So guys all the points I think uh, I have covered uh, in a string class uh, still there are many more things I would like to uh, basically discuss uh, on the string class. A string class is very important in Java. So we will see some of the important API in next video series. So I hope you enjoy learning this video. If you really like, really like this video then hit on the like button. Don't forget to share and subscribe my YouTube channel guys. Big thank you for watching this video and see you there in the next video tutorial.